ridiculous. You just goals. validated my point. Uh, that is how you measure success. What, right what now. I'm saying, what I'm, bro, you want to talk about success? That's you want to talk, you you talk about success? Su- right let me tell you what artist. success. Let me tell you what. That's all I want. Nah, to that one I'll tell you, you're totally wrong. You're correct very me, wrong. Please, I will me. correct you. Do you understand? There's something called a hit. There's something called a smash hit. Hello. Um, I just got here. Our skills arrived. Okay. Um, I'll join you now. All right. Yeah. 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 I'm good, all right, surviving, feeling great, feeling happy, you know, doing what I love, having family and friends around me to support me, motivate me, and, um, you know, I was really sick, and uh, my friends and family were there to motivate me, to make me recover. I'm still in recovery mode, but it doesn't look like that, but, you know, I'm happy. Hmm. The healing process EP. Yep. Um, the first track on the EP, God is Good, yeah. in many ways captures themes that are very common throughout your discography. Yeah. You know, um, from gratitude to God to resilience and a pinch of displeasure towards people who have betrayed you over the years. Yeah. Right. And there's a line that stands out on that particular record where you said, Little Mary, bless me so I can do with our friends. Who did nothing when I yeah. wanted them, something along that line. Um, these experiences of betrayal and um, disappointment, are they as frequent as you represent them in your music, or is it a case of you know past experiences that you're still having a hard time letting go of? I mean, when it comes to betrayal, it has to do with, with loyalty for me, basically, and stuff. But funny enough, that song, I didn't write it because of me, I wrote it because of a friend. And I also joined small of my story because mm-hmm. I had a friend that I, that was going through so much, and of course he was stressing me, and I was he had like suicide, suicidal thoughts and stuff, um, so I had to like go to his house, and make him pack his things, and come and stay with me because he you know he was he was married, mm-hmm. and his wife left him, and all those kind of things inspired that song. Mm-hmm. Then I mean I had a little of my own story too, and I made the whole song happen. But you know what they say about um, disappointment? They only mm. happen with their expectations. Mm. Would you say over the years you've high, had very high expectations of people? Funny, funny enough, no. Because, um, you know, God has always blessed me every year. This, I, I probably spent like more than a decade in this game from when I started till now. And every year is like di- this different kind of growth. You know, I'm one of those artists that is like um really huge in you know in africa you get me like last year i was hardly in nigeria you feel me and um i mean i, I performed in i perform in um in dubai i'm like a king you get me i can't even walk around some particular places you see a chinese dude an arabian dude indian dude you know it was so big that i went i was invited to india and uh, i performed alongside akon and beyonce it was shocking you know you know, when I hear you speak, I hear a lot of a lot of um, statements that tend to, you know, suggest that you really want people to know the stuff you're made of. You know, the level of success you've had. Do you yeah. feel like you're an underdog? Honestly, I've heard that a lot, but I feel like it's probably in this part of. I feel like it's in only in Lagos, but I don't think they see me as an underdog. They know I'm such a great human being, you know, and if I was an underdog, I won't still, to me, I won't still be such a huge star that I am, because, I mean, um, I won't be headlining a show that French Montana and Fabulous is my I mean, I support. continue to hear, I continue <laughs> to hear, I continue to hear the same thing. Yeah. You know, it feels like you have to mention successes to prove a point. Yeah. And granted, those successes are valid, they've happened, mm-hmm. you know, but how does the idea that you have to constantly states your achievement you know for people to really realize that oh i am actually who i am how does it make you feel that you have to constantly do that um yeah to me i won't have funny enough i've never actually thought about this because all i just keep thinking about is listen let's make the music let these people love it let it be smash let it be a hit let it be a classic 
you know that's all I think about I really don't worry about anybody telling me oh he's underrated oh he's an underdog mm -hmm. I just always think okay what am I doing wrong that I need to correct you know what 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 are they misunderstanding me for that I need to make it clear to them you get me mm -hmm. and um, I don't know man I just felt like maybe it was just a lot of my story that I didn't put out there for people to really understand that okay damn this is how far this boy has come and stuff and I mean clearly now I can see people are beginning to see it gradually you know so it, around this time last year you sent out a very compelling tweet about your mom and how she was constantly abused by your dad your father and um, and as a five-year-old you witnessed all of that right he also eventually left you guys with some other lady. I know that's a very sensitive conversation mm -hmm. to have. I don't know, but if you're keen on having that conversation, yeah, I'd like to. I'm used to it already. So, so could you please walk me through that experience? Um, honestly, because uh, I, f I always feel bad asking my mom about the situation. But what I talk about is what I saw as a kid. And you know, as a kid, whatever you see sticks in. So obviously, I still have like pictures of what it was if you even ask me what my father looks like right now, I don't know. <laughs> Give me, I don't lie that I haven't gone to find my father before. I've done that so many times because I really don't know what it looks like. I don't have a picture, but all I know is, um, you know, it was really a hard time for my mom. You know, that's why I respect my mom a lot, and it was really tough. And um, I mean, I've I've started learning to let go of hatred from my heart. If I see my dad today, of course, obviously forgiving him already um i hated i really really hated my dad mm -hmm. because he abandoned my mom and he did something that was very wicked we had a house he sold it my mom did not know so we were kicked out me and my mom used to stay in mechanic shops you know but my mom did not want me to leave the school i was in and all this kind of stuff and um yeah that's oh. just the story and i guess that's why i'm who i am I mean, I was I was going to ask you. Yeah, so how did that experience shape your character? Um, it just made me want to be great in life. You know, it made me want to, no matter what, just change our story because honestly, we were really poor. We had nothing. Mm. You know, my mom has done all kinds of jobs: laborer job, and cleaning church job. Like the church would pay her early morning. She come early morning. I mean, I was mommy's boy, so I was following her, I was seeing everything. And the most embarrassing one was I had a crush on this girl. Her name is Abigail. I don't know where she is right now. And, you know, one time now, I trek from my house. This guy collected my best bath, bath up. Mm. I walked to her house. And guess who the cleaner was? My mom. Yo, I felt so bad. And from that day, I told myself, I must be rich in this life. You get me? And, you know, that, sto that story, I told my mom, the day I told my mom, my mom I said, why didn't you tell me, blah, 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 blah. That, this is like years after. Yeah, because I never told her I came to the house, and when I saw her, I dodged. Because mm. obviously, I couldn't say that's my mom, you know, because mm. I was a kid, I, I was a teenager, and I was trying, I came there to toast again. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow, that's powerful. Um, you've spoken about how, you know, those experiences sort of like pushed you in a positive way. Mm. Just along the lines of your, your character, you know, what, what negative effect would you say those experiences had on you? Um, I know, for example, I'll give you an example, right? You know, psychology suggests that people or kids who dealt with abandonment issues from like their parents and stuff like that when they're growing up, they tend to develop a very clingy attachment style when they, when they become adults. And they feel they need more than anybody else to prove that they're enough. Is this a fact in you know your experience as, as an adult of yourself I mean the only issue that you know I, I'm not ashamed to ever talk about it is I hate to be alone mm -hmm. you know I hate to be alone and I don't know why honestly because honestly I'm more productive when I'm alone but I just hate to be alone that's what that's how I, I don't know if it's negative you get me I hate to be alone like you don't feel like you're enough for yourself no, come on, man. See, sometimes that I just want to be by myself, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, never wanting to be alone is... I'm talking about relationship-wise. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people that know me know that, you know, I love to be in, in relationships, right? Because 
my goal also as a kid was I said I was going to build a family with the right person and I'm going to make sure that my children experience such a great dad yeah me so um yeah I don't know if that answers that question so I saw a video of you at some point I think it was this year or late last year saying you plan you plan on getting married at the earliest opportunity is that still in view yeah definitely man um because my mom keeps that's my mom's biggest request and of course if you know me my mom is number one in my life and uh, my mom supports whoever i'm down with you know mm. and um, for me i just I, I mean i've come of age you know i feel like i need to find the right woman to sell down with and supports my dream and you know i support her dream build a family and stuff like that there's a lot of great nigerian women african women everywhere you know so let's let's come back to the alien process ep mm. You know, um, a lot of people, for such a striking EP title, mm -hmm. a lot of people would off the bat expect it to be all the way meditative and retrospective. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, it's a mix of a lot of things. The EP, you, you have like a lot of mellow pop records, reflective records, mm -hmm. and jolly up-tempo records as well. You know, yeah. for somebody who expected it to be all the way meditative and reflective, you know, what would you say to that person? Let me just summarize the whole thing. The whole idea of healing process is, I'm just talking about our everyday life. Whatever we go through, whether you're looking for money or, you know, setbacks and stuff, it's a healing process, man. This healing process never ends. It's like learning. It's like you're learning every day. So we're, we're being injured and wounded every day. So we need to fix it. Because you cannot tell me every day is perfect for you. Like right now, we were supposed to have this interview and there were some setbacks, right? So, and you know, we figured out how. So that's it, our own healing process. So that's what it is for me. Uh, most of my, most of my life for the past two, three years has been about a lot of love. Me building love in my heart because I've been hurt a lot by, you know, friends, a lot of people, you know, so basically. What role does God play in, you know, because the, the first track of the EP is God is good. Yeah. You know, what role does, does God play in your journey? Um. Yo, I'm a very, very, very religious person and um, a lot of things that happen to me that I wonder how and why. You get me? Like I just told you, um, I was I was booked for a gig alongside Beyonce and Akon. How? There is, I don't want to call any other artist's name because I hate to call other artist's name. There's other artists, Why skills. Do you get me? Do you understand? And I've traveled to countries that I've, I go there and I ask has any other artist been here? They'd be like, no, they only use skills. So, you know, a lot of the crazy things happen that, you know, if I've been to places that um, people like Universal have asked me, how did you get here? I've had a call from, I have a video that, uh, what's his name? Is it Whitney Houston's um, former Bobby. Bobby Brown called me. <laughs> you know, you get me? Teddy Riley flew me to London for 24 hours. Um, that's when we did Oliver Twist, you get me? And I have a video that he made a video thanking me. I should be thanking him for meeting such a legend, you get me? So, you know, it's just, why me? You feel me? And that's why I say God is good, honestly. Mm. So for the first time since it was released, um, last night I watched our last interview that didn't end so well. Um, the question I was asking at the time was, how do you measure success? You know what what is it you were trying to communicate that i didn't understand um honestly to me how i measure success is longevity how long you've been here and so how much you've impacted on other people how many times you fail and you know people thought you were done and from nowhere you came back and um basically that's most importantly for me though, how I measure success is how many times you failed and you came back and the impact. What's your purpose in life? The impact, the legacy. Most importantly, I believe in legacy. You get me? What if I die tomorrow? What, I, what would I be remembered for? You get me? Honestly, that's how I measure success. Thank you. Um, I'm happy we had this conversation. You know, just the takeaway from what I got would be that, you know, um, you want to be remembered as somebody, you know, that was resilient, that, that, that went against the wind and made it out yeah. you know without being consumed by the wind you know looking forward to the Indian process ep and the release date is june 
19th, 19th yeah. um, I've heard the EP already over and over again and yeah. um, I'm hoping that you know the people that the, the records are intended for we connect with the record yeah you know, it was good talking yeah and I also want to um, talk about a kid I just discovered okay. by the way his um you know I own a record label called book entertainment mm. he's right under me too um, his name is Kezi he's 16 years old he was responsible for like probably 80 percent of the whole EP the project and stuff so big shout out to him and uh, all I can say is let the world watch out for him and this is part of what I mean by legacy you know and I'm glad that I met him because honestly I met him online mm -hmm. and I invited him over and I won't lie he changed my sound and I really appreciate that but most importantly ladies and gentlemen get my EP Mr. Victor mm -hmm. God bless you God bless you, you know, happy with from the last interview to now you inspired me and I feel like because of people like this I became better, you know? Oh, yeah. So, God bless you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, man.